patient had raised serum calcitonin levels. The aspirate was cellular and it showed these cohesive and discohesive spindle cell fragments. The nuclei, as seen on the pap stain smear, showed stipple chromatin. That means there was a fine and coarse chromatin admixed. There was abrupt nuclear pleomorphism, as highlighted by these arrows. So what we saw was a sudden large nucleus amongst monomorphic nuclei, monomorphic nuclei of the tumor cells. Amyloid and cytoplasmic granularity were, however, not seen. But considering the raised serum calcitonin levels and the typical nuclear morphology, we signed it out as medullary thyroid carcinoma. This was later on confirmed on histopathology too, and the tumor showed a predominant population of spindle cells. Medullary thyroid carcinomas typically yield cellular aspirates. These cells can be singly distributed, can be present as discohesive clusters, or as syncytia. The tumor cells may be plasmacytoid, polygonal, small, round, or spindle-shaped. The cellular features include presence of granular salt and pepper or stipple chromatin, bi- and multinucleation. There is presence of abrupt nuclear pneumorphism and granular cytoplasm. This cytoplasmic granularity on MGG stain smears appears like metachromatic granules as seen over here. Amyloid, when present, is diagnostic of medullary thyroid carcinoma. Uh, so this was a typical case of uh, spindle cells on thyroid aspirate, which was diagnosed as medullary thyroid carcinoma. Let's see what else can show spindle cell on thyroid aspirate. So our case number two is that of an 18-year-old lady who presented with slowly progressive neck swelling of one and a half years duration. Ultrasound neck revealed a 4.2 centimeter hypoechoic solid lesion involving the right thyroid lobe. The aspirate was very cellular and the tumor cell was composed again of spindle cells which were present as vascularized fragments, as papillae, as syncytia and 3D fragments. Normal thyroid follicular cells could be seen and trapped within the lesion. <clears throat> a higher power showed the tumor cells to have this piece cytoplasm. The nucleochromatin was fine. The nuclei were hypochromatic and many bare nuclei and smearing of the chromatin could also be identified. We were clueless as to what we are dealing with. And uh, since the most common tumor in thyroid with spindle cells is that of a medullary thyroid carcinoma, we call this a spindle cell tumor with the possibility of medullary thyroid carcinoma. The clinicians um, subjected the patient to serum calcitonin level evaluation. However, that was normal, uh, post uh, which a uh, resection of the tumor was done. So uh, these are the images from the resection specimen. And you can see that thyroid was seen at the periphery. In other sections, it could be seen even within the tumor. The tumor was formed predominantly by these uh, fusiform to spindle cells, which had scanned cytoplasm. There was focal swirling. And uh, at places, we saw these thick fibrous septa coursing through the tumor. In addition, there were few of these tubular structures which were surrounded by uh, these cuboidal or low columnar epithelium appearing cells. Within this lumina of these was a presence, present this mucinous appearing material. We performed an extensive immunohistochemical uh, chemical panel. The tumor cells were negative for calcitonin. But pancytokeratin was positive in both the spindle cell and the epithelial components. <clears throat> Further immunohistochemistry revealed that uh, the tumor cells were also positive for CK56, for P40, but were negative for TTF1. Thyroid transcription factor, uh, that is TTF1, it highlighted just the normal entrapped thyroid follicular cells present within the tumor. In addition, mesenchymal marker, the smooth muscle actin, was also positive in the tumor cell. Hence, uh, uh, the possibility was that of a biphasic tumor, but the tumor cell was negative for MIC2 and uh, BCL2, and a diagnosis of uh, settle or spindle epithelial tumor with thymus-like elements was given. This uh, tumor and with its features was published in the journal Cytopathology. The, uh, these tumors are typically low grade. They involve young patients. They are biphasic as seen in this case. And they show an admixture of epithelial and spindle tumor cell components. We retrospectively analyzed the cytology aspirates mirrors and we found that we could actually see uh, the tubular structures were present even, in the, in, even on the aspirates. 
So there were these uh, tumor cells which were present around this basement membrane-like material seen both on Papanicola as well as on MGG stain smears. Coming to our case number three, this was a 12-year-old male child who presented with gradually progressive neck mass of one and a half years duration, which was associated with dyspnea, dysphagia, and voice change since one month. Clinically, there was a large 10 centimeter midline neck mass with signs of left vocal cord palsy. Clearly, we are dealing with a malignancy over here. The CT neck showed a 9.1 centimeter heterogeneously enhancing lesion involving the left thyroid loop, which was also adherent to the surrounding structures. The aspirate was very cellular and it was composed of this uh, spindle tumor cells which were oval, had scanned cytoplasm which was nondescript, no clear-cut cytoplasmic borders were seen. So a possibility of a malignant spindle cell tumor was given. Although we did not see any amyloid, we did not see cytoplasmic granules. Uh, and there was no family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma, we gave a possibility of medullary thyroid carcinoma. The serum calcitonin levels, uh, which were evaluated later, were found to be normal. The, uh, considering the progressive nature of the disease, the uh, clinicians went ahead with total thyroidectomy. These are the images of the uh, gross and the microscopy of the resection specimen. On gross, you can see a fleshy tumor which replaced the entire specimen. The thyroid gland was markedly distorted and the tumor was also involving the adjoining skeletal muscles. Microscopically, there was a spindle cell tumor which was hypercellular, blue looking, scan cytoplasm. And the tumor cells were oval to spindle. The cells were negative for pancytokeratin, but few tubular structures were highlighted by pancytokeratin as well as by CK7. The spindle cell, I'll again repeat, were negative for cytokeratin. EMA or epithelial, micro, uh, epithelial membrane antigen was positive in the spindle cells. They were also positive for MIG2 as well as BCL2. Hence, a possibility of a synovial sarcoma was considered. But thyroid as a primary for synovial sarcoma is extremely rare. Hence, we needed a confirmation of the diagnosis. We then subsequently uh, went ahead with, by, uh, and performed fluorescent in situ hybridiz hybridization. The tumor was actually uh, positive for uh, translocation X18, thus confirming or clinching the diagnosis of synovial sarcoma. This case was also published in the Cytopathology Journal in the year 2018. Uh, on reanalysis of the cytology smears, we could find few vague glandular structures in the aspirate. In fact, some of these cells appeared more polygonal or epithelioid as compared to the spindle cells which compose the predominant population of the aspiration. Case number four is that of a 61-year-old lady who presented with a left neck mass infiltrating the adjoining neck muscles. There was a history of rapid increase in size of the tumor two months back. So uh, I'm sure you must have at least made a clinical diagnosis and let's see what we see on cyto and histopathology. So this was a hypocellular aspirate as there was a lot of necrosis in the background. There were only few viable cells which were present either singly distributed or as these discohesive clusters. The cells were spindle, they were pleomorphic, uh, few polygonal cells were also seen, but um, there was nothing specific. It was more like a malignant spindle cell tumor. So considering the age of the patient and the clinical scenario, a possibility of anaplastic thyroid carcinoma was considered. This was later on confirmed on true cut biopsy. Anaplastic thyroid carcinomas typically present with singly distributed cells, discohesive clusters, necrosis, and tumor diathesis. They have a neutrophil-rich infiltrate, which can help in clinching the diagnosis in the appropriate scenario. The cells show market nuclear and cellular pleomorphism. Bizarre forms are there. There is hypochromasia, bi- and multinucleation, and high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. My case number five is that of a 31-year-old lady who presented with recurrent neck swelling. Previous history of total thyroidectomy is there, uh, which was performed in 2018. Currently, MRI neck revealed a relatively well-defined, enhancing, irregular soft tissue lesion measuring 5.4 centimeter in maximum dimension involving the left cervical region. 
it was encasing the left carotid artery and compressing the internal jugular vein. Inferiorly, it was extending into posterior mediastinum, anteriorly into the subcutis, uh, and uh, or laterally into the left parapharyngeal and superior into the, in, superiorly into the submandibular spaces. The aspirates were moderately cellular and was composed of these spindle cells which were embedded within these stromal fragments. So if you see, these stromal fragments are actually have, um, are hypocellular and collagenous in appearance. In fact, this particular fragment does not have any cellularity. At the periphery, you can see some spindle cells with some inflammatory cells. MGG stain smears, uh, again, show these magenta-colored stromal fragments, some inflammatory cells, and within the magenta-colored stromal fragments, you can see these lesional uh, cells which appear spindle but there was not much atypia the chromatin was fine and hence a diagnosis of a low-grade spindle cell lesion was given as there was no mitotic activity uh, or necrosis in the background the trucker biopsy was received which showed a spindle cell lesion as there was less tissue in the uh, block what we did was we retrieved the 2018 resection specimen slides this was the gross of that particular specimen, which uh, showed that the entire uh, thyroid was replaced by this particular tumor, which is gray-white in appearance. Microscopically, it was seen that uh, this lesion is infiltrating between the normal thyroid follicles and entrapping the follicles on the way. The nuclei are low grade. Uh, there is collagenous matrix, wavy matrix in between, and uh, there is uh, lack of hyperchromasia. Only an occasional mitotic figure was seen. So uh, we again performed an extensive immunistic chemistry uh, panel, and the tumor cells were found to be positive for smooth muscle actin, desmin, and uh, showed nuclear reactivity with beta catenin, thus clinching the diagnosis of, you all must have guessed it, and it's right, thyroid fibromatosis. These lesions typically show spindle to oval cells. They have a bland nuclear chromatin and the cells are embedded in stromal fragments or collagenous tissue fragments. On a PubMed search, we found that there is an occasional case report of thyroid fibromatosis. This was a first for us. Uh, in fact, on the previous uh, resection specimen, which was uh, in 2018, it had been signed out as redal thyroiditis. Uh, coming to case number six, which is the last case, uh, this was a 49-year-old lady who presented with a left neck swelling with metastasis to liver and lung. A clinical diagnosis of a thyroid carcinoma metastatic to these two sites was considered. <clears throat> what we got was a cellular aspirate. The tumor cells were uh, arranged as cohesive and discohesive clusters. There was a moderate amount of nuclear adipia. Cytoplasm uh, was nondescript, and uh, the cytoplasmic borders were not clearly demarcated. Uh, it was mo uh, more like a syncytium of cells at places. And uh, we even found normal thyroid, which was intimately admixed with the tumor cell component. Uh, in this, uh, considering the presence of pleomorphism and the presence of metastasis, we gave the possibility of a malignant spindle cell tumor uh, with uh, consideration given to mandibular thyroid carcinoma and anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. A biopsy characterization was, however, advised. Uh, the clinicians went ahead with taking the biopsy from the metastatic site in the liver, which showed a similar spindle cell tumor, which was cellular, the nuclei were blunt-ended, and on immunohistochemistry, these were immunopositive for smooth muscle actin and desmin. Now, uh, considering the possibility of a primary leomyosarcoma in thyroid was very difficult. So we probed the clinician and the patient was called and it was found that she did have a history of total abdominal hysterectomy done two years back. Although no records were available, the uh, final diagnosis was uh, given as to that of a metastatic leomyosarcoma. 
uh, on a PubMed search, we found a similar case report, which has been recently published. So this was the case of a 64-year-old lady who presented with anterior neck swelling. There was history of surgery done for uterine leomyosarcoma four years back, which on FNA had, and uh, sorry, on FNA of the thyroid swelling, a possibility of anaplastic thyroid carcinoma had been suggested, as was also done in the current case under discussion. Another case published in 2010 was that of an 86-year-old lady who presented with right thyroid swelling with history of pelvic soft tissue tumor excision. In this, uh, on the FNA from thyroid swelling, again, a spindle cell lesion was seen. Interestingly, um, the pathologist had a cell block uh, to his disposal and they performed smooth muscle ectin, which was positive, thus clinching the final diagnosis of metastatic leomyosarcoma. Spindle cells in thyroid aspirate can be present in other tumors. So uh, primary thyroid tumors like papillary thyroid carcinoma can show focal or diffuse spindle cell morphology. There is a variant known as PTC with nodular fasciitis or fibromatosis like stoma, which is actually a biphasic tumor. But if you get the stomal component aspirated, so if the needle hits the stomal component, you may see just spindle cell stomal fragments. Renal thyroiditis, as you all know, uh, can yields uh, stoma-rich uh, cellular uh, stoma-rich aspirates, uh, solitary fibrous tumor, post FNA spindle cell artifact, peripheral nerve sheet tumor can also be uh, aspirated and may show spindle cells on thyroid aspirates. There are uh, certain carcinomas like spindle cell squamous cell carcinoma, which may uh, develop in the thyroid gland, and rarely follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma can also also show a spindle cell morphology. Hence, presence of spindle cells in a thyroid aspirate is a potential pitfall and uh, there is a risk of misdiagnosis. Most aspirates, but not all, spindle cell lesions are medullary thyroid carcinomas. Involvement from other primary and secondary tumors should be given consideration. Awareness of possible differential diagnosis their salient diagnostic features and a clinical radiological correlation are essential. Immunohistochemistry on cell block, when available, is helpful and may actually clinch the diagnosis. Thank you.